Hey, so you probably found this video because you're looking to take an animation and sync it up with some sounds, but sometimes we can actually use those sounds to animate with. And really this comes down to bake sounds with F curves in Blender. That's the main way we do it, but I thought let's do a bit of a video on like how I like to set up my workspace so I can actually hear what I'm doing and setting up the animations because I do it quite a lot here on YouTube with my nice little videos here but also do a really deep dive into that modifier and really understand how it works so we can get more professional sort of visuals out of it and some of the cool ways we can do it. So right now I've got down below a URL link that goes off to one of my songs. So I've got a whole bunch of tracks open up so we can actually pull the stems, grab that. It's gonna help us with the animation and for you to test out a few things and let's get straight into the video. Alright, we're here in my studio space just in front of Blender. So I'm using 3.3.0, which is their long-term supported version. So pick a version in around here or the latest one. You should still be able to do it. Like the bake to F curve is quite established now. And what we're going to do is just use this little cube to animate some of the prin principles of using sound to animate with. But there's a little bit of housekeeping I like to do before I start animating with sound. So first thing I like to do, come into the animation tab up here. And you can actually scroll on these. So use the scroll wheel to go all the way to the left. You'll see this icon here. Select that and then we want to switch this to the graph editor because that's where we're going to do a majority of our baking. If you don't see this panel here um, like that, uh, there's a little arrow here. Select that. That's going to help us out later. And give this side more view. So if you just drag that across, we just need to see what's going on here. And what we're going to do most of the time is we're going to select this hamburger, come down to key, and then bake sounds to F curve. And that's a bit of a like in the menu. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to add to quick favorite. So select that one, hit Q on the keyboard and quick favorite pops up with all the little tools that you want, which would just be that bake sounds F curve. So much faster than going through that menu system. And if I just hide my face here, Leave this um, timeline here and you'll always be wanting to bring that bar to zero while this one we can actually look at where we are in the animation because when we bake it's always going to work from this point here moving forward. And there is a bit of a uh, time thing as well because when we're dealing with frame rate so you can leave it in the default 24 frames and animate but if you're trying to animate to a video and you try and change it it's using that frame rate to change the speed of what's going on. So what we're going to do is come down to this like little printer icon, which is the output properties um, and this frame rate here. So usually I like working to 29.97. That's a lot of the video producing I do. Maybe 24 if it's something special. Um, but if we select that one, everything's going to be synced and our timing is going to be correct. So pick the frame rate that's right for you. And before we start jumping in, what I like to do is just go add video editing, video editing. And this is the way that Blender makes its videos. So we can use this to bring in a sound. You'll get these files. So this is one of the music projects I've done on the Poly and Tracker. I'm just going to grab that master file, bring it into here and just line it up with zero. And this could be your music as well. So it doesn't have to be what I've given, uh, what do you want to have, but we can hear what we're doing. But Sometimes we want to sort of hear the audio as we do this motion here. So if we go to playback down here and we want to select audio scrubbing and what that does, it sounds a bit glitchy, but I can use it to figure out where sound is happening. So I'm just listening at the drum and yeah, so that is really the core to everything I'd like setting up here. So. Animation time. Right, we've got this cube and it's super cool, but I want it to bounce with the thing. So right now, if you go object properties, that's where all the transforms. Transforms just special word for like where it is in space and how it looks. I want to animate that one. So I'm just going to hit I on the keyboard or you can right click and go insert keyframe. And with all the keyframes themselves, like I do like to keep everything on zero. <laughs> just tells me that this is a baked animation because that's where it's going to start from. And as you can see, it's brought in, if we click the drop down, it's done all three. 
but we only want to animate that one. So I'm just going to turn the other two off and then we're going to start baking. So you can go through the hamburger, but Q, bake sounds to F curve. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a file location. So on an Apple, you'll be able to get your data path however you can. Uh, Windows, I can just copy it from there, paste it in, hit enter, and now I've got all the sound files. And this is where, with the poly and tracker, like it exports a whole bunch of stems. So a stem is like an instrument of a track on a tracker. We can have whatever we want, but usually when I'm working, I try and keep track one as my kick. And I'm going to use that because it's quite a simple sound and it sort of shows how we can use some of these settings. But if I just bring it straight in now, it's flatline, kind of scary, but oh look, there's our animation information. And I might scale the animation so as we can see the kick drum goes on for a bit and then usually there's a bit of a working file here so yeah that's about where the end of the song is so i'm just going to set this number here to 4400 that's telling me that's when the end frame is so we got 4000 frames that we're going to animate didn't have to animate any of it our kick's already animated so this is like bringing in stems. We could bring in like the melody line and the pads and all that. And all these boxes are going to animate like we can change up. But what happens if we want to sort of change up this curve? Like say it's like it's coming in a bit too hard, like the animation's too quick and we want to soften up. This is where we want to bring this number back down to zero. Q, bait sound. And this is always replacing the last animation. So if you don't like what you get, you can come back in here and change the settings. So say I want to soften up that kick hit and I'm just going to set that to 0.1. And it's dropped a bit in volume, but how attack and release work, like if you work with compressors, like the attack time is like how much the effect takes in. So it takes its time to come in. And then the release time is how much that effect is going to hold on until it continues out. So because a kick is like such a hard hitting single point, uh, the sound is probably up here and then like finishes down here. So when we're bringing the sound in, it's gonna drop in volume, but it's gonna be a lot softer. So see how it's more squishy and we can sort of use that to control how the sound comes in. Same thing again, if we wanna bring the sound out, uh, we can set this one to say 0.5 and there we go but it looks like it jumped up but what's happening here is because the release time is going all the way out and then hitting the attack of the next one it just tells the variable to go back up so you just got to keep those things in mind when you're animating with sound usually i find the default settings is quite good so that 0 0.005 and 0 0.02 those for me work really well and yeah, it gives me something to work with. Now, this is a really cool way to animate, but sometimes we don't get access to stems. We just get the master files. So what we can do there is start using the frequency to sort of cut down onto the sound itself. So if I just bake the uh, master file right now on frame zero, as you can see, we're getting a whole bunch of information and those kicks are sort of lost in the animation itself so what we need to do is figure out where the kick is sitting on like a frequency spectrum and then we can animate that number so we can use that um, the lowest frequency and the highest frequency and that's why I recommend getting audacity like you may have some audio workstation that has a frequency spectrum that you can use to get this um, go use that but audacity is free we can use it I use it sometimes to just make some quick edits so what we can do is we can bring that master file, bring it in. Uh, it's going to ask us to make a copy so we don't destroy the original, which, yeah, okay. And we're going to find that kick. And if you haven't looked at a waveform before, like I can visually see that that's a kick there. It's repeated over time and it's quite low because like the squiggle is quite wide instead of like this squiggle, which is quite uh, short. So using that, we can go to analyze, plot spectrum, and boom, we got this frequency spectrum of that little snippet. And there's two numbers that are happening. So where the cursor is and then see how this peak one doesn't move because it snaps to the 
highest response. So what we can do is use that to find the frequency of the kick drum and what you want to do is try and find the most amplified version of that spectrum. So right now I know that that's the kick drum uh, sitting at 60 hertz. So with the actual baked sound the F curve modifier, what it's doing is it's looking at that full frequency and spectrum, finding that highest point and then using that for the animation. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go back into Blender, Blender, and because it was 60 hertz, I don't want to like nail it at 60 because if we're like looking for a melody line, that uh, frequency is going to shift. So if we give it a bit of a range, so like low end, when you're dealing with like tens to a hundred, like you probably want to go like 10 hertz either side. Uh, your mid range frequency, you're probably dealing with a hundred, like because it's around 400 to like a thousand, so you're probably around a hundred. When you go up to higher frequencies, like 16,000, you probably want to get a few thousand either side. So I'm just going to go 40 to 80. That should be enough to capture the sound. And then bake sounds to, oop, almost did it. Make sure that the playhead is at zero. Bake sounds to F curve. Cool. We've isolated those drums and same thing again we can do that for melody lines we could do that for uh, the pad sounds uh, you will get a little bit of this like noise but sometimes that adds to the animation so but you can actually cut it out and that's where we can start using the modifier so that's why I told you to get this little menu open so if it is still closed click that we want to select modifiers Add modifier envelope. Just put that back at zero. Envelope. So this is how we can start controlling how the animation is. And I deliberately put on frame zero so it's like a global change to everything. Like if we want to invert the sound, like we can drag and move it around. What I like to do is just type in numbers. Um, they're sort of relative to each other. So this one sort of controls the amplitude of what the sound's doing. So like if we want to invert it and that. And this one's like it's power. So uh, usually I stick to whole numbers. So if one's on one side, neg one's on the other side. And that's inverted the sound. So if I wanted to say push that up, do something like that, we got a bit of a squishy animation. So it's like inverting the sound. And say like I wanted to uh, sort of push this up higher because it's not hitting hard enough. Uh, what we can do is, well it's at point 0.2, I want it to hit around point 0.6. So if I say neg 4 and 4, we just amplified the signal by 4 times. So that's pushing it right up. So that's going to hit a lot harder with 4. And you can do this to any variable. Like uh, when you're dealing with rotation, like it's using Euler angles. So if you've done math, like think of a protractor, 360 degrees. So if we wanted to push this up to 360, we'll need to modify that here. But this is how we can sort of control the audio. And we've got all this like visual noise here as well. So what we can do is use the envelope to like cut that stuff out. So 220, that's like when this sort of kicks in. So what I can do is add a control point, come back a frame or two, no, come back a frame. So we've got them listed out now and it does try and keep all the frames organized. And if I go zero, zero, so there's no power whatsoever in that starting point, it's going to flatline that zero, zero. There is no data here. So we just cleaned out all that animation. It's not going to animate until that point there. And you can go through the entire animation. Like if I wanted to say cut, cut this out from here, I could add another couple of control points then bring that animation down into those points and that's how we start sculpting how the set, like these animations happen throughout the uh, frame rate. So that's how we can sort of manipulate how these sort of animations come in and out through the timeline and really that's pretty much it. Like as you stack more of these things on top of each other like uh, with this uh, animation here right now it's like um, going up and down but what happens if I want to change like it being squishy like same thing again, I could select the Y, uh, bake sounds to F curve, and we've got the kick drum, do that, bake sounds to F curve. So we've got the animation data in here, what we can do is we can use this copy and paste function up here, so I'm just going to hit copy modifiers, 
come to our wire scale we're going to paste it in there all right cool so i just did a bit of playing around and pretty much just inverted the signal and it's just sitting on top of that so <laughs> It just became a bit of a squishy box and like we have so much control like there's a whole bunch of these points around blender that we can animate uh, there are a few other little things with that bake sounds to f curve like if i want this to continually rotate like uh if i just use this animation curve it's just going to rotate like it'll keep flapping back and forth but i just pulled out the rotation stuff uh if i select one of them q uh, just make sure it's on zero bake sounds master file and I want to say additive so the additive and adaptive so additive just adds the signal strength on before and just continually keeps going up accumulative is sort of like the average so it's a little bit shorter but adding additive bake sounds if we zoom out we'll see this line just gone absolutely ballistic gone straight up into the stratosphere which is really handy so if we select our section that we've got animation gone can see it continually rotate to get to that point so these sort of things like you can start controlling manipulating them but these are all the tools that you need to start making some really cool animations with the bake to f curve all right i hope that's giving you a bit of food for thought because this technique has really been a crucial part of me making my animated music videos here being able to animate with the sound files themselves saves me so much time but being able to get that like nuanced detail there that's really how we get the most out of that bake sounds for F curve. And I'm going to leave a link up here because I've done another video on another technique where I talk about looping animations and creating like polyrhythm animations. And really those two techniques is about 90% of the grunt work that I do to make my YouTube animated videos. So really two really useful techniques that work in tandem. So if you definitely enjoyed this one, definitely go check that one out. And also if there was any part of this video that really helped you out, definitely give it that thumbs up because I might be pushing the algorithm at the moment, being a music channel, trying to do Blender 3D stuff here. But I really feel this is going to be helpful content, especially getting into making animated music videos and all that sort of visual stuff that musicians should be trying to put out with their uh, sounds that they're putting out. So yes, definitely, if you enjoyed it, definitely give it a thumbs up. Tell me uh, what else you would like to see down below. I do want to push this series a little bit further. So if you want to stick around for that, definitely do that. And I look forward to seeing you next time.